Hello there, my name is Mac Horse, and nowadays I don't really know what to make videos about for this channel. I don't have many ideas of what kind of tutorials that can be useful. It seems like all of the videos on this channel do a great job of teaching the basics and beyond. So, here is a second volume of Discord help video clips, narrated by yours truly, me. A pretty common question on my Discord server is, how do I make my character appear at the tick I want them to appear? The trick here is to make the initial morph in the scenes panel to be nothing. And then make the actor appear by adding a morph, at desired tick, with the morph that you used as initial morph in the scenes panel. Let's play it back, and as you can see the actor appears at tick 35, as I wanted it. Watch this video for more information. Another common question is, how do I use orbit, follow or look modifiers? How do I make pick the actor at which I want the camera to orbit around, follow or look at? All you have to do is give a desired name tag to your actor, and then copy that name tag to the selector field of the orbit, follow or look modifier and then, it would work. Since you can't really select multiple limbs and move them around together, here is a workaround on how to do that. The trick here is to add a parent bone, which will act like an anchor point for other limbs. Here I have a model with a couple of separate objects. Go to the model editor, select that model in the list, and create a new limb. I'll call it anchor. Then make this anchor limb transparent by changing the limb's color opacity to zero. Then for every existing limb, that is not parented to other limbs, parent it to the anchor limb. Save the model by pressing Ctrl plus S and then go back to the morph with that model and now you can use anchor limb to scale and rotate all these objects together freely. And final common question is, how do I pick a skin for emoticons morphs? You grab a skin and place it into blockbuster's skin solder. Once the skin gets transferred into one of the skins folder, you can pick the skin in the emoticons morph editor. The easiest way to do it is to press Ctrl plus P. The Obi-1 skin went into the Fred skins folder. So we need to navigate B.A, Fred, skins and then I pick the Obi-1 skin. Keep in mind that emoticons skins work only with 64 by 64 pixels skin 64 by 32 pixels skins will appear stretched. While still being on the topic of emoticons, some people asked me in the past, how do you make your thumbnails? I never been a fan of those rendered character thumbnails, to be honest, they look cool when they are done by someone experienced, however in a lot of situations it's really easy to mess up the perspective. That's why I make my thumbnails by posing characters, with model blocks, using pose features of blockbuster, emoticons and chameleon morphs in a Minecraft world. It might take a while to set up these, but with shaders these can look really cool. A couple of notes though, you can control plus click on these blue cubes to select bones. Watch this video for more information about emoticons morph. Now let's get to into discord clips that can be summarized by this phrase. How can I copy a thing that another youtuber made? Haha, <laughs> I'm just messing, but something like this. Ethobot in his My Hero Academia intro in Minecraft, had this clip and a couple of persons asked me how to do this. The secret here is that every block here is an actor. Which is an empty morph with a block morph attached.
When the character get animated they get animated in random directions, creating an illusion of earth shattering. If you're not a fan of iRigs, you can create HD skins using Photoshop or other image manipulation programs, like Herr Bergman does sometimes. Here is an example how to raise an eyebrow using just a skin, paint eyebrows, or extract them another layer. The first step is to scale the skin to 2048 by 2048, or 4096 by 4096 if you prefer. Pixels. Make sure that you disable any smoothing when scaling by selecting nearest neighbor sampling. I'll copy the left eyebrow to a separate layer, and rotate slightly. Meanwhile, I'll make the second eyebrow a bit bent using Photoshop's Puppet Warp. And in the end it will come out something like this. This requires some experimentation and practicing to look good. Another thing coming from Herr Bergman is how to make a character walk on a car or something, basically on another model. First record the vehicle, here is a fire truck. Then record another actor. But make sure you are oriented towards south. Once you finish recording, add a record morph to the fire truck with the player recording selected. And give it the same morph as in scene. It might need some tweaking, but once you'll finish, it will look good. When recording, be mindful of the space that is available, so your character won't end up floating. For more information, watch a video about record morphs. If you ever watched Spider-Man role plays, like Akira or Gabriel SNF, they did the first person web swinging using a BB gun configured to launch the player, and custom default in firing morphs that appear to be like an arm in first person. The first step is to duplicate Fred model, and remove every limb for exception of the right arm. Then, place that arm into default and firing morphs. Configure the gun transformation so it would look as it was the arm in the first person. Then add a web pointing up. In my context it's just an item morph with stick. Position this item morph so it would look like it goes out of the arm upwards. Finally enable launch player option, and right click to swing. Whoops, looks like the arm is pointing down, so I'll just move the stick under the arm, haha. <laughs> And here you go, Spider-Man. This clip is a bit pointless, but if you ever need to turn Christmas chests into regular during Christmas, what you can do is, first load the chest textures manually, by picking their textures in the image morph texture picker. 
Go to Blockbuster's Texture Manager panel. Find the Christmas variants, and replace them using the replace button with regular chests. I'll leave the texture paths of chests in the pinned comment. Remind me in the comments if I would forget. Haha. <laughs>and the final clip shows how to return back old animations from first version of emoticons. Download actions.bobj file in the description, and place it into emoticons emotes folder. Then reload animations. Relog. And they should work. So yeah, I don't know why anyone will want that, but if I made this clip, somebody wanted this. Hum. That's pretty much it. Hopefully some of these clips were new, and also helpful. Thanks for watching, sharing and subscribing, and goodbye.